basketball to Australia now. And the attacker who killed six people at a busy shopping centre in Sydney has been named as 40-year-old Joel Couchy. And police say it appears his motive may have been to target women. The victims include a mother who died. Just check this, trying to save her nine-month-old baby who was also stabbed. Now, Karen Webb, the Commissioner of New South Wales Police, says that detectives are focusing on the fact that most of those women, most of those stabbed, were indeed women. Have a listen to this. Well, the videos speak for themselves, don't they? And that's certainly a line of inquiry for us. That's, uh, it's obvious to me, uh, it's obvious to detectives that that um, seems to be uh, an area of interest that the offender had focused on women and avoided the men. Well, joining us now is broadcaster Alex Thomas, live from the Westfield Mall in Sydney, where that attack took place. Good morning, Good morning Alex. Uh, what do we know about Joel Couchy? Well, Joel was 40 years old. He's from a small city called Toowoomba, which is about a two hour drive west of Brisbane in the state of Queensland. Um, he recently moved to Sydney last month and officials believe he was living out of his car. Uh, he was diagnosed with mental health problems in his late teens. Um, but authorities say that over the last couple of decades, he refused to engage with health services in Queensland. Um, but nonetheless, he was regularly in contact with his family, particularly used to text his mum fairly regularly. I think the last contact recorded was in March. But what is part of the mystery here is why he came to Sydney, what he did while he was here, who he interacted with, and even what happened in the build-up uh, to the attack in the Westfield Shopping Centre behind me here. Uh, you can see how many tributes have been laid down. Uh, and tragically, of course, we're learning more minute by minute, about his victims. Alex, uh, welcome to talk today. Really good to have you on. Um, two things here that I want to um, touch upon. Um, you talked about the mental health issues. Uh, it's easy to sit here and go, for goodness sake, the man had mental health problems. What's he doing being allowed to be in society in the first place? Why didn't somebody, you know, family members, I don't know, authorities, she said he wouldn't engage. Uh, apparently stories over the weekend, you know, had knives, we're going to have these knives sharpened and all those sorts of things. Very, very concerning. Always easier after the situation. Australia quite strong on things like that. Is this a case, I'm afraid, a tragic case of a, a missed chance to diagnose and deal with somebody who's got issues? Does it highlight a problem in your country in that way? Potentially, and certainly the New South Wales State Premier, Chris Minns, announced two things today. One, that they're going to look into a permanent memorial to the victims to be placed here at Bondi, the way it's happened very occasionally when things like this have occurred in Australia previously, um, but also releasing, I think it was around 18 million Australian dollars of funding uh, for an independent coroner's inquiry, just to look at all facets of what happened around this attack, the response of the emergency services, and of course, um, what happened with the mental health services. It's very difficult for authorities to put any flesh on the bones, if you like, of, of the motive, because um, while New South Wales Police have been working with their counterparts up in Queensland, uh, they say that despite the diagnosed mental health issues, uh, there was no arrest, there was no caution, no criminal record of any kind whatsoever. I think the most recent contact New South Wales Police had uh, in their records uh, was a mental health concern, which I believe is a relative just getting in touch with authorities say, we're a bit worried about him. Uh, but no suggestion that he would do anything this senseless and this violent. And Alex, we know that five of the six victims were women, the sixth victim being a man, security guard, who, who stepped in to try and intervene um, and sadly died as a result. What can you speak to? I know we, we don't know much about motive, but we know that the police are looking into the fact that the, he may have been motivated and may have actually been targeting women. Is there anything from his history to suggest that that would be an issue? There isn't. I think when we heard from Karen Webb, the New South Wales police commissioner a little bit earlier, she was just responding to reporter questions that there is so much social media video around. You can see how he avoided direct confrontations, certainly with larger men and targeted women. Uh, you're right to, to point out, I mean, every story is a tragedy, isn't it? But certainly the one that's captured the imagination of the Australian public and just rammed home how senseless and tragic this is. Uh, is, I mean, we're seeing now Dawn Singleton, who's 25 years old, and she's the daughter of a very renowned Australian businessman, John Singleton. She was actually engaged to be married to a police officer. Uh, but all the stories are tragic. Ashley Good, who you showed a photo of a little bit earlier to your viewers, 38 years old, a new mother, 
the nine month old baby girl who we know that was also attacked and she spent her dying breaths. <laughs> it's actually getting to me right now as a father. Oh, God. Spent her God. dying moments taking her baby for two men for protection. And we know the baby was saying the Sydney Children's Hospital uh, had an operation and thankfully is doing much better. Um, but it just says everything about how, despite the wider picture of there being more tragedy around the world and lots of war zones and death and destruction, it's really just knocks the whole community here for six because they can't understand why it happened. Alex, I've been doing this a long time, my friend. Thank you just for your professionalism and your honesty. I really appreciate you being and on the show the this morning. the emotion that no, yeah. undoubtedly is involved in a case like this. And Thanks, do you know mate. what also makes me so angry, I just think it's worth saying, Jeremy, is how this case was weaponised by some people over the weekend, people who jumped to conclusions about what had gone on, people saying, you know, that they thought that this was an incident, that it wasn't suggesting that it was a terrorist attack, that it was some kind of Islamic attack, which it was not. This was an attack against women and in fact the only Muslim involved in this case was the man, a asylum seeker, refugee, um, who was actually jumped in to try and save the lives of one of those women and sadly died as a result. But an incredible um, report there from Alex Thomas in Sydney um, and yeah, real emotion shown both there and I think in the studio here as Absolutely well. Absolutely right and um, and I think, I, think that's, I think you're right, I think it's really easy to get wrapped up in the horrors of what we've... I mean, it hasn't been the great start of the day, has it? You've got the problems in the Middle East. When you hear about a woman throwing her baby at two men who are strangers to avoid that baby being stabbed, you ask yourself, whoever you are, however strong you are, there's something wrong with the world, mate. Either we're not being... Either we're not dealing with these people, either we're allowing them to, to roam or we... I, I don't know what, but everybody should just take five and go, wow, Nick, good yeah. words.